Hello and welcome to another video from the Polyonic PC Wargamers using JTS the Polyonic series to highlight and demonstrate both the games and how uh, warfare in the age of Napoleon was played out. In this video we're going to look at combined arms tactics. Now I've set this scenario up as a custom scenario in Wellington's Peninsula War and the French have got a victory location up on top of this high ground. We can see that by that little flag and we can see here 52 points. I, 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 Missed with the key, it was meant to be 50. Anyway, we've got a, an objective of 52 points. Um, we're going to be Wellington, and we've got some troops down here. We've got some artillery up in the top left. We've got some cavalry there. We've got some 2nd Battalion, the 95th. And we've got some guard infantry here. Um, it's a very favourable position, but I want to just highlight and talk about uh, combined arm tactics. We've looked at the simplified way of how combat resolved, but just sort of putting that all together putting all the arms in together and hopefully being able to take this high ground. Now I've set the French AI to defend this hex, I did have them in this trench and everything to make it a little bit more difficult. It's heavily weighted in our favour, I'm expecting to win but it's not about winning or losing in this one, it's about showing you um, how to play and sort of building it up into a larger scale uh, conflict or, or, or resolution if you like. So the first thing I'm going to do is always have a look at the troops we've got. We've got some Coldstream Guards, we've got some Foot Guards, Wellington's back here with a Supply Wagon. 2nd Battalion 95th are here in the middle. We do have some Dragoon Guards and then we've got some artillery up here um, with a detachment of skirmishers from the American Rifles, the 60th Rifles. Have a look at what the French got, um, where they've got three guns. Uh, they've got a leader up there, I think it's uh, Marmon if I'm not mistaken. Um, they've got some skirmishers they brought in um, that I did have out here. They've also got some skirmishers forming a skirmish line. Um, and they also have what look like line troops. Also got some more line troops there. Some, and two more lots of skirmishers. Um, as always, I haven't got that many units and I've set it up myself. But if it was an unfamiliar scenario, I'm always going to come to view, have a look at division colours and just see what we're actually playing with, make sure everybody's lined up uh, to get a big picture so I'm, I can keep my commanders where they're supposed to be. Um, I don't play with that on usually. Next thing I'm going to do then is have a look at what the French can actually see from this high ground because that's going to um, have a play or have a say in how I'm actually going to approach them. Ideally, using combined tactics with some artillery to soften them up using cavalry to either guard, not as a punch weapon, um, and then masking my approach potentially along this bank here in the, in the bottom right, um, and then we'll see how we get on with the middle using cover to approach from multiple angles if possible. So to do that we're going to go and look at the visible hexes box. This is from that high ground, we can see we're, we're actually covered quite nicely in that bottom right. The left is all open. Uh, the 95th are going to have a job because it's fairly open in the middle as well, um, but Wellington's nice and protected as well. From this step here, we can see that they, the line infantry and the skirmishers can actually see a little bit more of the approach. However, we're still masked from uh, approach on that right-hand side. Well, the next thing we're going to do is I want to get a skirmish line myself. So I'm going to break off from these guard units. Remember, guard units can break themselves down entirely into skirmishes, but I don't want that many skirmishes. We don't want skirmishes roaming the battlefield. Now I'm going to break them off and I'm going to bring them up to hopefully meet these skirmishes up here. Now I have got two abattises here that are going to disrupt any movement through them, be it through the skirmishes or my main unit. I'm going to take the coal stream guards, I'm going to start that approach from the bottom right. I'm going to break off some skirmishes from the foot guards as well and bring them up here. Now, probably able to get a shot off on these skirmishes to get things going. So I'm using them as a sort of a, a mini vanguard to mask my approach and anything up here the French have, we're going to have to deal with the skirmishes before any main body of troops. Now I might not actually need these guards at all. Um, I will bring them into play just to show you how I would use them. And we've got a skirmisher up here. Um, I've got 296 men there and what I can do and what I will do, um, because we're sort of masked here by this low ground and this skirmisher cannot see these uh, cavalry, there'll be a nice surprise for them, an unpleasant surprise. I'm going to break them down into, uh, 
we'll break them down into another squadron there as well. Uh, let's put them back. So break them down into uh, a squadron by selecting them, pressing the skirmisher button, going back to the parent unit, and then breaking them down again. So basically, I've, I've split my cavalry into three. Um, I'm going to turn them around and ensure that they are facing to the right, just in case anybody comes down from that step. And we'll see what happens with these skirmishers. I'm in a position to charge. Remember, you can only charge with the direction you're facing. So if I was facing down this way, I'd have to wait a turn to rectify that um, and not be able to put them into play. The other thing we're going to do is I've got some artillery here. And it, it, it's some large guns, some heavy guns. So what I'm going to do is just click on the hexes in the surrounding area just to see what these hexes can actually see. Um, and that's going to uh, define where I actually place my artillery in the first place. So I can see from the next hex up from this high ground, we can see that some high, higher ground than they're actually in. But quite a nice place because we can blast away uh, everybody up on the victory point. Um, we can't see these guys here from where we are. We'd have to sort of move quite close to be able to see them. Yep, there we go. So right on them. So they're quite well protected from the artillery fire. Uh, he's got quite a few guys up there. He's got a lot of skirmishers. He's got those light troops. Um, and the, the, they've got the guns up there as well. So what I'm going to do is bring up the artillery. And we've got enough points now to actually unlimber that artillery. So I'm going to unlimber it. Because they're heavy guns, we can't use them this time. We've got to wait until the next turn. Only horse artillery can fire in the same turn. And we've got these uh, detachment of American rifles, the 60s rifles. Um, I'm actually going to bring them forward into cover to deal with anything before it gets to artillery. I'm not too worried about the skirmishers actually approaching that artillery, and if they do, um, they're certainly not going to take it, not with 70 odd men. Plus, they're going to be protected by the cavalry. Um, okay, so 95th. I'm going to break off some skirmishers there as well, and I'm going to bring them forward along the main road and have a crack up here. Now, Rifles, um, as the name suggests, are actually armed with rifles, and they have a, a, a further range than a musket. Musket would be good for about 100 yards, uh, no more, and a rifle possibly 300 yards, 400 yards with a good shot. So, in general, we can fire across more hexes with a rifle than we could with a with a musket. So there we are. There's not a lot else we can do this turn. Have a look there. That approach is open, so I'm going to leave them where they are. I do want to protect my supply wagon. Um, there are some titles in John Tiller that your supply wagons are particularly vulnerable. Wellington's Peninsula War and uh, the new Waterloo update being two of the titles. Um, take that off and then go into the next turn. And see what the French do. Okay, there's so not a lot changed there. They brought these skirmishers forward, and that's a perfect opportunity for this hidden cavalry here to actually charge them up a bank, so we'll lose a little bit of the momentum of the charge. However, I, I would say we would overrun them and they'll be taken out of the picture. Um, the artillery is not facing me, so I'm not running much risk, so I'm going to select those uh, uh, Dragoon Guards. I'm going to go to Change Charging, and they get a nice surprise with 150 cavalry. There we go, straight away we overrun them. Um, artillery wise then, now we can start to fire away at the troops up in the top. And you can just about see we can fire at the artillery, we can fire at the line troops that are in column, or have a go at the skirmishers. My best bet here, counter battery fire wasn't really done in the age of Napoleon. The skirmishers, because they're a very loose order formation, we won't hit many of them. I'm going to have a go at the bulk of the line troops in column in the middle. There we go, so we got 13 men. Uh, I'm going to bring my skirmish line up one hex. And bring these skirmishes up here as well. Okay, he's got low ammo now, I never noticed that, but he's got low ammunition, so all he can do is melee now. However, I've got two skirmishes there, and the 95th there, and the, the gut foot guards are within striking distance, so I'm not too worried, I don't need the numbers up there. I'm actually going to bring them back down this way and then bring that supply wagon back up to them. Supply wagons, remember, have a 
an effective range of resupply, if you like, of five hexes. So hopefully on the next uh, turn, the dice roll goes in our favour um, and they will be resupplied. I am going to continue my approach on the east side. Now when I cross a river, I do run the risk of getting disordered. However, these are guards and they're A-plus guards and they've got a leader there, so we may disorder, we'll, we'll see. Nope, we're good. So we're going to approach there. Now, I've only got four movement points left for these guys. I could continue across that river or I could go up to the left. However, if I go up to the left, chances are we're going to disorder because we're going up a step and those uh, skirmishers are up there. What I am going to do though, just in case those skirmishers come down on my flank or anybody else comes down on my flank, is change the direction because we're still facing up to the top right of the screen. So I'm going to select these units and move them so that they are facing any potential enemies or, or troops that are going to come down and meet them. We've had a go with artillery. My cavalry can't really do much at the minute, so next turn, unless there's anything sort of comes in front of them, I'm going to bring them back down behind that nice sheltered ground um, and use them when I need them. They're valuable, we don't have tons of them, um, and we don't use them as a battering ram, just throw them in the battlefield. Um, we're going to use them strategically to uh, to bring them into play as and when they're needed to get some sort of advantage that we've created elsewhere, be it through artillery um, or to capture, hopefully, um, some troops that route, essentially. So bring the 95th up a little bit. So that opportunity fire from the gun it's up the road. And again, they're facing directly across the, uh, the screen there to the right, so what I'm going to do is just turn them around. Okay, not a lot else we can do with this turn, so we'll go on to the next turn. Okay then, not a lot help happened there, but what I did notice was a supply wagon of the French. That's a nice juicy target. Now potentially I could go up, fire upon these skirmishers and then melee, then I'm in a nice position flank on to that gun to take out that gun and the victory location. However, they do have 500 odd men there, a leader uh, and three guns. All they would have to do, or they would have to do, is change that gun round and I'm in a little bit of trouble. So, if I take away their supply, they're going to run out of ammunition with no means of uh, being able to resupply. However, I will, because I take over that supply wagon, um, and it's got 300 odd supplies, we will not get the full 300, they will destroy, potentially destroy some of those supplies on the way. So what I'm going to do, bring these troops up, got enough points to take it there. We can melee. Uh, all we do is just melee as we would with anything else. They have a combat, or the supply wagons have a combat rating of zero. Uh, and then we're going to resolve the melee. There we go, we've overrun that supply wagon. Now, potentially, because it's horse artillery and they still got some men there, it was a risk reward sort of thing. They could easily bring those guns to bear on these Coldstream guards. Um, with all that infantry and cause us a little bit of problem and actually win that supply wagon back. So it was a bit of a risk versus reward type thing. I'm going to bring my skirmishers up a little bit more. Slow and steady wins the race. And then bring the 95th skirmishers up as well. Okay. Artillery, we're going to have a go again. Other guys up there. Okay, so our Coldstream Guard skirmishers there are formation. They did resupply because they were within five hexes of that supply wagon. And you can see that our supplies went down from 300 supplies that we initially had to 280. So they're nice and supplied. A little bit open on the right hand side, so just in case they're going to be bringing any reinforcements down from that road or the troops hidden back here, I'm going to bring those skirmishers out to about there. Now, in general, skirmishers would not act independently. There were some units like the 95th that would act a lot more independent than others. The British didn't actually make use of skirmishers much at all. Probably less than I'm actually using in this game now. Um, 
and you need to be within five you five hexes of the parent unit for them to be effective other than that they need a leader with them um, or they they start to reduce their combat capabilities plus it would be unrealistic to do so so i'm going to bring my supply wagon back up into protection we're going to bring van alton or the light division up with his 95th rifles to bolster them a little bit give them a little bit more backbone um, and we can see that they're disordered now they're disordered i can't really do anything with them um, I can't change formation. I can move, but at a reduced rate. Um, and if I have a look at that artillery, I can see that they can't see that little crevice there. So that's a nice place for them to sit it out with their leader until they sort their disorderment out. I'm going to bring that cavalry back down here. Again, okay, they got disordered there because they went down a level. Let's just turn them around, ready for anything that happens in front. Not a lot else we can do. Although I might actually start to bring the foot guards now up into play. To bring them up on that step, I'm going to avoid these abattises because I'm going to get disordered. And it might not be one turn until they undisorder and sort themselves out. Um, so I am going to go up this nice gap in the middle. 